This conference will now be recorded. Hello guys, welcome back. So now here in this session, I'm going to cover a very important topic of account receivable that is called Dunning. So guys, first of all, we'll see what is this Dunning? It is also called Dunning program. So what, what is this Dunning or what is this Dunning program? What exactly the use of this? And then I'll explain how to set up and we'll perform the testing as well. So first of all, try to understand this Dunning. Guys, if you talk about Dunning, if you are going to uh, search uh, the definitions on Google or anywhere, so you'll be finding that the definition says it's like Dunning is going to be used to send a reminder to the customers. I'll tell you guys, see account receivable means all the transactions which is related to the customers are going to be recorded and it is going to be taken care. Receivable means like whatever the outstanding invoices are there, invoice amount is there, right? Whatever the outstanding balances are there, which is yet to be received. So I'll tell you now, whichever the customers are there, out of which like, let's suppose 95%, 96% of the customers are uh, pretty good. They are making payment on time. But still, there might be uh, some customers we uh, who due to certain reason, they are unable to make payment on time. Or else, there might be some different reasons also that even like uh, for certain invoices, the payment we have received, but few invoices we haven't received. Because invoice is sent to the customer and the customer like they have forgotten to uh, record might be in their system and because of that the payment there is a delay in terms of payment. So whatever the root cause is there that is uh, a different thing here. But the thing is like if you are unable to in the sense if Tata Motor is unable to receive the payment on time in case of 5% of the invoices or 2% of the invoices. So of course we have to remind to the customer we have to remind that your invoice number like our invoice number so and so is uh, with with this much amount is still due or it is overdue by a margin of so much so so and so date like invoice become due on like uh, uh, so and so date and it's now it is overdue by a margin of 20 days 25 days or 30 days so still we are waiting for the payment we have not received the payment right so we have to send a reminder later to the customer then they will check in their system and they'll get back and uh, whatever the reason is there, either they will make payment or else if there is any clarity is required, they will uh, contact to the uh, you know account receivable team and they will coordinate and then the payment is going to be released, right? So reminder need to be sent. Now here in this era, like if, if uh, are we going to send the reminder, uh, what to say, like through email or else like manually by writing the letter or typing a letter and all? No, <clears throat> here because if I say 5% of the invoices, that 5% also is going to be like several thousands. Thousands of, thousands of invoices or it could be several thousand invoices. So now here one by one, if we started checking like, okay, how many invoices become due or how, how many invoices are overdue. I'll just put a simple example here so that you guys will be having again a perfect understanding. So let's suppose I'm having a particular customer again, XYZ limited itself. And in this customer, so multiple invoices against a customer, we are going to post multiple invoices 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, 2,000, again 3,500, 7,000. So multiple invoices are there, guys. Multiple invoices are there. Now, so this is your invoice amount invoice amount right now what about the status so here so first of all this is the invoice amount and what is the status status of this invoices so i'll tell you now status means this invoice become overdue and this is due again this is overdue this is overdue this is due and it is not due. This is also not due. This is due, not due. Okay, so now overdue by a margin of so I'll specify here grace days. Okay, what is this grace days? Also, I'll explain, guys. Don't worry. So now here by a margin of 
like certain. So this become overdue by margin of let's suppose 25 days. Okay, and this is overdue means it become overdue today itself. Sorry, this is due means it, it become due means in current date today's date itself it become due right and tomorrow it is going to be overdue by a margin of one days right so we'll talk about only uh, what do you say this overdue right overdue or we can say like here overdue i'll, I'll just not waste it guys overdue margin so it become overdue by a margin of 25 days this become overdue by margin of 10 days and this become overdue by a margin of let's suppose three days okay and remaining whatever this due is there like it is like today it's a zero days right zero days and here not due means it is going to be due it is going to be due might be after like uh, 15 days so i'll give you a minus 15 days okay it means what is happening guys okay i'll have to do one thing guys i'll specify like this then so minus 15 days likewise here i'll specify minus 10 days right and here zero and not due by margin of like let's suppose uh minus five days. it means what is happening guys tomorrow <coughs> tomorrow here the margin is going to be 14 days day after tomorrow 13 days likewise what is happening guys the days are going to days are going to be reduced and finally there will be a time where it is going to be treated as a due and after that it is going to be converted into overdue o overdue by a margin of one day two day three day four day five day like that this is what that is why i have specified minus minus 15 days means it is going to be due after 15 days right minus 10 days means it is going to be due after 10 days and this is going to be due after five days so example is quite simple guys now here i will just do one thing let me cut it here okay so i'm going to put it here now so here okay this is the thing so now let's suppose this is become overdue my by margin of 25 days this line item right and okay so i'll do one more thing guys there is one more scenario grace day okay grace day means we have given certain grace day to the vendor sorry to the customer okay grace day means we are saying that let's suppose even if the invoices become due even if the invoices become due still we are giving five more days additional from our side to the customer that you have to make payment within these five days okay we are not going to escalate the matter immediately the moment it become due we are we are going to wait for five days or seven days whatever it is it, the, that agreement is going to be between customer and tata motor so if they have given five days it is going to be like five days is going to be treated as a grace day it means tata motor will wait for the payment for five days so in this case what is happening guys this five days grace period is already crossed instead of five it become 25 days and we have not received payment yet in this stage here also five days is already crossed and instead of five days it become 10 days and still we have not received payment so now what is happening guys so in this case we have to send reminder reminder to the customer okay reminder to the customer okay but here this is also become overdue by a margin of three days guys so still we cannot send reminder why because we are giving we have given already five days as a grace day so still like two two more days are there right so we have to wait for two more days and then only we are going to send and then after we can send a reminder later at any point of time so here for these two invoices what is happening we have to send a reminder to the customers right now look at here how difficult it is in a customer if you are going to check a particular customer in that customer multiple invoices are there right now in every so every invoices are either due or overdue or not due so first of all you have to check the overdue item and then you have to check how many invoices are overdue overdue by a margin of like more than five days 
because five days we have already given the grace period only. So if it is going to cross the five days, then only we can claim to the customer that your your deadline is whatever deadline we have given is finished. Now you are supposed to make payment, right? So it, it's going to take time. Customer wise, every uh, you know one by one, if you are going to check each and every customers, uh, let's suppose we are having several thousand customers. So it's it's going to take too much time. A single resource is not possible to find these all things. We you need to hire like Tata Motor need to hire uh, a resource of let's suppose hundred uh, not hundred or thirty or forty or fifty people. It depends upon like how many number of customers are there, right? More number of customers means more resources are required to check like which invoices are due, which invoices are overdue and all, right? So now this is not required. This is not required. Why? Because if you and then this checking itself is going to take lots of time. So SAP is saying that now we are having a program called Dunning. Okay. So if you run this Dunning program, if you run this Dunning program, then system automatically search the invoices. This is this invoice is eligible and this is eligible. Remaining all are not eligible, right? not eligible for dunning in the sense reminder right remaining all invoices are not eligible for sending the reminder later only two invoices are eligible so system if you run this dunning program system is going to find out this whatever the which first of all system is going to search which invoices are eligible to send a reminder to the customer right this is the one thing okay and manually what is the challenge guys manually you need to know these things guys right manually uh, what this is how you guys will be having a perfect understanding so manually what is the challenge manually it's time consuming it's going to take multiple resources are required right so manually this is what the challenge even we are having other challenges also you should know so that once i show you the configurations then you guys will be having uh, you know a good understanding so here the first challenge is manually if you are going to search the status one by one that how many overdue invoices are there and that to the invoice which is supposed to cross the five days it's going to take too much too much time and second thing is like let's suppose if manually we are searching manual manually we are searching let's suppose a limited number of customers are there so manually you can search let's suppose and we have sent the reminder then other challenge is also there other challenge in the sense like how many reminders are going to be sent one reminder two reminder three reminder four reminder there should be some limits right it's not like that we keep on sending reminder and the customer is not listening or uh, it means they are not responding uh, to whatever the mail or whatever the latest we are saying sending to the customers they are not responding at all so in that case what is happening guys every organization will have a legal department so you have to transfer this matter to the legal department these people will have handle they are going to uh, send a you know notice uh, to the customer and legal notice is going to be sent that is a different thing right so how many reminders are going to be sent let's suppose there is a limit that only three reminders we are going to send and in this three reminder if the customer is not making payment if we haven't received any kind of uh, what you say let's suppose a response from customer in that case we'll take the legal actions so the first challenge is to identify the like how many overdue in the sense how many eligible invo invoices are there that is the one challenge because multiple customers are there second challenge is like let's suppose for this one we have sent the first reminder okay we have sent the first reminder so first reminder what is happening guys little bit like in polite manner we are going to write like okay dear customer this is to notify you that this invoice number so and so is become overdue by a margin of 25 days kindly make a payment as soon as possible right if you are going to send the second reminder then bit harsh language we are going to uh, this is not notify that like this is a second reminder which we are going to send because we have not received any uh, what is the response is the first reminder right or is whatever language that is your client is going to let you know like in what manner they are going to notify the customers right and the third reminder means during third reminder what is happening we are going to thread them threatening threatening in the sense like if you are not going to make payment then this is this issue is going to be handled by our legal team and they will take take them whatever the required uh, what is the legal actions are there we are going to take it 
okay so like that we are going to like that it is going to be so now here second reminder we have sent to this customer right and let's suppose for this customer first reminder is sent so next time how we will able to remember that for this one second reminder we have sent and for this one only one reminder we have sent so this time for this one we have supposed to we are supposed to set second reminder and for this one we are supposed to send third reminder right and next time for this one we have to second send third reminder but this is not so this is not included why because already the maximum we have already three reminders deadline is there of three reminders so three reminder we have already sent so this is also we need to remember manually if you are going to if somebody is going to process this uh, you know like these things manually then this is also they have to remember manually again the other challenge also will be there in manual process guys there should be some gap also between first reminder and second reminder right there should be some gap also so how to remember the gap for this line item i have sent the reminder on so and so date and there should be a gap of 10 days so now the next reminder is supposed to be generated uh, after 10 days only so look look at here guys the complexity is going to increase the moment i keep on adding the new new criteria then the complexity is are going to increase do you think that it is possible to manage manually it is not possible to manage manually because the number of customers are there and in every customer multiple uh, what do you say uh, open items are there so now it become very complex to handle this right so in that case what is happening no need to worry about because sap has given a program that is called dunning program right and this need to be configured this is supposed to be configured and why configuration is required guys configurations of course like a standard program has been given by sap but configuration is required why because uh, it, it depends organization to organizations different different requirements will be there different different requirements will be there in the sense like let's suppose dunning program is going to be configured for tata motors so tata motor is saying that maximum like let's suppose tata motor okay steel then i'm having tata chemical so everybody are having different different requirement tata that i will send only three reminder tata still says that i can send four reminder that is the maximum tata still tata chemical says that i'll send till five reminder okay so look at here the number of reminders are going to vary right so during configurations you have to set up three different dunning procedure for data motor Tata Steel and Tata Chemical separate separate dunning procedures are going to be configured and then this condition is going to be given. Now, what is the gap between first reminder and second reminder? Tata Motor says that there should be first 10 days gap. Tata Steel says 15 days gap and here Tata Chemical says 20 days or else Tata Chemical says that only 7 days gap. Tata, uh, uh, what do you say, uh, Steel says that only 8 days gap. Here Tata Motor says that 10 days gap. So here number of gap also like what is the interval interval between the first reminder there should be some interval between the first reminder and second reminder interval is nothing but the gap so this is also going to be changed now grace period what should be the what should be the grace period because if uh, let's suppose if the grace period we are given to the customer tata motor has given five days grace period they have given six days and here tata chemical has given seven days so the same invoice same invoice let's suppose uh, for the same invoice what is happening guys let's suppose in the same same invoice will not be there for every company code guys but i'm telling like let's suppose there is an invoice worth of uh, a particular amount right so for that like whatever overdue i it become overdue by a margin of by a margin of six days right one invoice become overdue by a margin of six days so for tata motor we can send the reminder for but but this tata steel and tata chemical we cannot send right because we have to wait till today and for tata chemical it is we have to wait till tomorrow right so these kind of multiple such kind of things are there guys even we are having options to charge penalty also penalty in the sense like since we are sending reminder let's suppose if you talk about the you know uh, uh, the companies which is there in europe so they would like to generally they are going to send the letter to the customers so even here in sap we are having uh, we, we are having like a, a, what to say like letter is going to be developed by your technical consultant uh, and that letter is going to be that is called dunning form 
and dunning form is going we are we are having this functionality dunning form will be developed by your technical consultant and that is going to be assigned to the dunning procedure so with the help of sap itself even the letter is also going to be printed right so what kind of what kind of contents are there in the letter tata motor will have a different contents tata steel will have a different contents tata chemical will have a different contents right so these all things like if you are going to configure or if we configure this dunning procedure then only so configuration is required right we cannot say standard configurations standard config, standard configurations means like let's suppose if something is fixed fixed in the sense like okay grace days five days only if tata chemical says that no uh, we, we are giving seven days and all you say that no this is already predefined given by sap only five days so this is not acceptable in that case like the companies are not going to be agreed they will say no why should because we we have already tied with the multiple customers and we have already agreed seven days and all so configurations means what we have to do guys standard settings has been standard uh, this this dunning program is given by sap but we have to configure as per client's requirement as per customer requirement so who is your customer guys if we are doing implementation for tata motor then tata motor is our customer right so as per tata motor we are going to make this settings as per tata steel requirement whenever we are going to go for rollout for tata steel then for tata steel we are going to define a different dunning procedure and it is going to be for tata chemical it is going to be defined a different dunning procedure and uh, there might be a question in your mind that can we use the same dunning procedure for other company codes guys generally if, if you talk if you ask me then to be honest no we are not going to use the same same dunning procedure because somewhere you are going to somewhere some differences will be there right somewhere the differences will be there even though let's suppose your data motor also is going to say three this is also three and here also it means all they have decided three days three uh, remind the letter here the interval between first dunning and in the sense first letter and second letter the gap between first letter and second letter even all three company codes agreed that 10 days 10 days 10 days right and grace days five days five days and five days now again the same question that what about this tata motor tata steel and tata chemical do we uh, like uh, use the same dunning procedure in that case i says in that case also i says that better to avoid we we'll create a different dunning procedure because might be in future might be in future if they are going to change the requirement then what will happen and second thing is dunning letter whatever dunning letter is going to be generated whatever dunning letter is going to be generated for tata motor a different dunning form is going to be developed by uh what to say uh, client uh, sorry your technical consultant and for data still different uh, dunning form supposed to be uh what do you say developed and for data chemical different dunning form is going to be developed even though we are having a what do you say a functionality here dunning form is going to be assigned against company code guys right but still i'll tell you generally we use a different different dunning procedure only if you talk about the dunning form we have developed like dunning form a for tata motor dunning for b for tata steel and dunning from c for tata chemical now there is, there is a question can't we use the same dunning form so guys same dunning form is not possible because dunning form is nothing but a soft copy right a soft copy of form it is there is going to be developed by because if you talk about the letter is going to be printed so what is the contents what contents will be there in the letter right so certain certain fixed contents will be there and certain variable part also will be there variable part that i'll let you know once i configure the dunning i would say uh, once i configure the dunning uh, procedure then i'll let you know right variable part means like line item is going to be picked by system invoice is going to be picked by system so every time invoice number will be different amount will be different right uh, the margin of this like uh, overdue margin right that is called days in arrear so that is also going to be different different days will be there right so that is the variable part and fixed content means dear customer this is to notify you that uh, you know like uh, 
so th these kind of contents this is called like fixed contents for every customer it will be there but the invoice number amount and other details will be different so certain logic is there guys to develop that form even though like that is not our responsibility why because that is going to be developed by your technical consultant a functional consultant what is our activity so to uh, what to say to configure this dunning procedure okay and once that form is going to be developed by your technical consultant that is going to be assigned i'll show you practically guys you will be having perfect understanding don't worry right what i am saying that there is so i said like why can't we use the same dunning procedure even though almost all requirements still still for the safer side generally even the client itself is going to suggest you that better to create a different different dunning procedures for this and even a different different dunning form is also going to be developed guys why because if you talk about tata motor tata motor is having its own logo tata steel is having different logo tata chemical is having different logo if the letter is going to be printed the company logo also supposed to be there guys company address supposed to be there tata motor is having separate address tata steel is having separate address tata chemical is having separate address right the phone number fax number also is going to be different tata motor is having different phone fax tata steel is having different phone number fax number tata chemical is having different phone number fax number right email id is also going to be uh, is, is going to be there so because if you talk about a particular letter which is going to be generated in that all the details are supposed to be there right so that's what i'm saying that if you talk about the dunning procedure always for every company code a different different dunning procedure is going to be created okay i think guys uh, for explanations i can explain like i can give some more explanations guys but uh it may create some confusion so i'll just do one thing now whatever the remaining things are there that i'll explain practically itself so that you guys will be having a uh, good understanding so i'll stop this uh, theoretical explanations here itself and in next session i'm going to show you guys how to configure the dining procedure so there that is going to be quite interesting and again the testing part once we have created the dining procedure and all as for the client requirement right so how you will come to know that uh, these things are working perfectly so of course we have to make uh, testing and all so those testing is also going to be done so that is going to be done one by one so that's all in this session guys next session we'll show you the configuration part